Now we move into the deep, dark, sinister underworld to see how that factors in. And before we start, um, I'd like to make you familiar with a couple of books. There's so many sources, you know, research sources that you can look into. One of the most important uh, for what we're going to talk about today is actually The Covert War Against Rock by Alex Constantine. He's uh, written other books and he has a website, so definitely check out the works of Alex Constantine. Um, certainly, Transformation of America by Kathy O'Brien. Uh, the Franklin Cover-Up by Senator John DeCamp. Very, very important. The work of uh, my colleague um, Ted Gunderson from the FBI, ex-FBI agent in Los Angeles, who is very up to speed on the stuff we're going to be discussing today, um, and personal friends with people like Arizona Wilder, Bryce Taylor, and Kathy O'Brien, and many others researched this whole network of uh, child abuse rings and all sorts of other criminal institutions pertaining to that. He, my discussions with him helped me confirm stuff that I'd studied in the 80s, but you know, couldn't really completely understand. And so I had lots of questions. So when I met him, it was a great day for me because we sat down and had some great conversations and he helped put a lot of pieces together for me to confirm. Uh, another book is Why Johnny Can't Come Home by Noreen Gosh. And then my colleague in Ireland, his very good book, Jim Cairns, Disappeared Off the Face of the Earth. He has a website as well. If you go to my forum, we have a child uh, abuse, child sacrifice uh, as a, a part of the forum where you can find lots of these links. And my interest actually, and this did occur back in the 1970s after the spate of uh, very violent uh, serial killings that were ritualistic in nature of young boys who were uh, dismembered. And it was unusual in Ireland because any killings outside of terrorism were not very well known. And so this shook the community very badly back in the 70s. Um, because they were ritualistic in nature. And my dad at the time, who really didn't know anything about this particular stuff we we're going to talk about today, he did tell us that uh, he believed it was uh, very elite pedophile rings of uh, politicians. And in fact, it subsequently turned out to be that, where some very top brass in the British government, top members of the Conservative Party, were directly implicated in, in that particular spate of killings. And that, that piqued my interest, you know, for some bizarre reason. One of the most important books one will be dipping into quite a lot today, um, and if you've got a strong stomach, I recommend you buying this book and actually having it in your library. It's The Ultimate Evil by Maury Terry, uh, published in 1987. It's interesting for many reasons, partly because it really gives the true story of the Son of Sam killings, which happened in 1976, and also the part that David Berkowitz, who was indicted for all the crimes, he actually... Uh, was involved in two of the killings, not all of them. And yet today he is doing time for all the killings. Um, so it you know, clears up that. It shows you how the New York press, the, the media in general, skewed all the facts, uh, how they misrepresented the evidence. They didn't tell you that three police cars were always witnessed around the Son of Sam killings. Turned out that they were protecting the killers, that the police were involved in it, certain uh, people from the Yonkers police force. And that the, the people, you know, we were, we were generally misled over this. And David Berkowitz himself, uh, uh, Maury Terry's conversations with him leaked over 18 years. His re his re Berkowitz's real name is actually Richard uh, Falco. And he slowly disclosed, since he was first incarcerated back in the uh, 70s, he slowly disclosed this information. And it was done over a very long period of time because he was worried that the organizations that he was talking about would retaliate and hurt his family. And as he said, he had said that his mother and father had gone through so much, he had put them through so much pain already, that the last thing he wanted to do was have them hurt and harmed by the people that he was going to speak about. And so he would only speak to Maury Terry in very cryptic ways, only giving very small pieces of information over many years. And Terry followed up on all of this, and Ted Gunderson was even involved in one of the aspects when it came over to the California side. And everything that Berkowitz was talking about was confirmed. And I'm a big believer in his work. I don't believe the debunkers 
who try to say this is the reason he did this and this is the reason he did this and this is why he's giving this information. I, for one, am very much um, cognizant of what David Berkowitz has been saying. And I want to uh, play a little clip that we have in Architectural Control for those who haven't seen it. A small clip of the interview he did with Maury Terry. In 1993, announced that the entire spree was engineered by a satanic cult and others had participated in the plot. Of course, everyone had played a role as far as the the chanting and the praying, everyone had had a role in that and, and understanding that, you know, this was going to be another uh, sacrifice to our gods, a bunch of scumbags that they were. <laughs> our gods, Lucifer and his crew, and we said, yeah, this is going to be another one for you, you know, and I said, As I say, I really do recommend for those people who are interested in this, and um, the other thing that he points out, you see, is that many of the top brass in New York City, the people, very elite people from uh, Rhode Island and, and others were involved in this, top people in the media, basically showing that Berkowitz did not act alone and his work was endorsed by the district attorney at the time who moved on to be a senator, John J. Uh, Santucci, reopened the case after Maury Terry and others presented the senator with the information. So the case is actually officially reopened again because the media story, the, the official story does not fit the facts at all. Um, in fact, Maury Terry says here that Jerry uh, Moscovich father of point four four victim Stacy told me that his cousin was a judge in Brooklyn where it was common uh, courthouse gossip that the case was butchered. Likewise a surviving victim said in 1997 by now anybody who knows anything about this knows that Berkowitz had accomplices. Terry goes on to say that Robert uh, Violante who lost most of his vision in the attack that killed Stacy is yet another who no longer accepts the official version put forth in 1977. I tend to believe that Berkowitz was part of a satanic cult, Violante stated in 1995 interview. And the main group that David Berkowitz implicated is a group known as the Process Church of the Final Judgment. And that was a breakaway group um, according to David Berkowitz and others, of Scientology, actually. It's affiliated with Scientology. And uh, I've said for years that we only need to look at the symbolism of Scientology to know that something's not quite right there because um, just like there's stage sets and other stage sets that we see on the media, we also, uh, you know, we see these Masonic symbols like the double triangle, which is 33, 33. We see the serpentine S, we see the pyramids. And we also have to realize that Scientology, the police know that they have their own spy network, a very sophisticated underworld spy network known as the Guardians. And in fact, bizarrely, the so-called cult awareness network, where if you watch a lot of American TV, you'll constantly have these experts on cult activity, right, from this group called the Cult Awareness uh, Network, is actually created by Scientology members. There's not a bit of a contradiction in terms. Well, this is how it goes. That's why you... It's difficult to find out the facts and anything. And of course they have their henchmen, they have their people's champions. But again, look at the symbolism. It's the same Masonic Illuminati symbolism that we find. And this is very important to remember because when we talk about individual little cults running around doing all sorts of strange stuff, just like we can't believe that lone gunmen were responsible for most of these uh, assassinations or what have you, it's also not just lone cults that work independently.